It's crunch time, basically. Last modification before we hit the trail on the Rubicon is alternator. This one's original equipment, and it's actually, I didn't know that, it's got problems. I'm glad I changed <laughs> it. But that's not why I was changing it, because it was junk. I'm putting a welder on it. This is going on it, and then we'll hook the welder up and do a little welding with it, show you how it works. But yeah, that alternator's toast. That was what was squealing on us the other day. It has problems. It's got problems. I'm glad we decided to figure that out or it would have developed along the way down there. We'd have been stuck somewhere with a, a broken belt. So I bought this kit and it's a direct bolt in alternator, 180 amper. So I should be able to weld some pretty good stuff with it. I hope to never need it, <laughs> but I'm gonna have it if I do. Like I said before, this isn't a real rock crawler. This is just a trail rig. So we're not gonna get crazy, unless we do get crazy, but we're not gonna try to. Doesn't like that very much. Hey Dad, guess what kind of fire truck this is? Um, I don't know. A ladder truck? No, not a ladder truck. It is a P360 fire engine. I'd have never got that. <laughs> I'll go put the belt back on it. And then we can start running wires, tear that ABS computer out of there. That thing's going away. It doesn't do anything anyways. It's basically just there for looks. What are you dropping down on me here? There's that broken bolt. Oh. Now we just got to tear that out, make it fit. And I'll put, oh, and my cold air intake is supposed to be here today. And I can put that on, it goes over on this side. So. We don't have anything hooking here and I drilled some holes. Wasn't a good idea. That's been that way for a long time. So we're putting a cold air intake over. The filter will go right here. And then we're gonna bend these brake lines around, take the ABS out, put my welder right there, or my control box for the welder right there. That's, that's the plan. We'll start going back together. Just let it go. Somewhere right there. Oh, there we go. All right, there's that. Now we just gotta build all the mounts for the other parts and then we'll get everything hooked up. Ran back where it needs to go. I don't know how to unplug this exactly. I think I'm on to it. That seems like a lot of wires going there. They're not going there no more. We're getting the cold air intake put on this. And that's the size of the old intake. All right. Well, we're trying to figure it out without reading the instructions. It's worst case scenario when you go to the instructions. This has got to get bolted into here. Maybe not. That's a big old filter. It is a big filter. Just get that little impact gun. We're going to finish it. We got all the first piece is about to be connected. We're in the mock-up stage right now. That's why they invented instructions. Yeah, we don't need instructions. <laughs> we're making this up as we go. I thought you said we, you weren't gonna read the instructions. Well, it appears I'm missing some stuff. Do you see any of those little number W's anywhere? I don't. That, is that W? That doesn't look like the same. That looks like an X to me that goes in the back. Yeah, it does. I don't know. We'll build our own. Drill those holes, and then we should be able to get the welder bolted in. Well, we got to fix the drill press. What's wrong with that? We had it on some crazy angles. We we're trying to get JD's uh, speed sensor hole drilled out. We had some crazy angles we had to do to get the right stuff, but we made it. One day I'm going to have to invest in a better drill press, but it's not today. Those should fit onto there. That welder is going to be nice. Who drilled these holes? Uh, Casper. The friendly ghost. They about didn't fit. Oh. This one, I was in a hurry. That's why we bought this one, or we would have just built one. Okay, it's on. 
I got my cold air intake all put on. Welder's down there. So we're gonna fire it up, see what it does. comes on. Awesome. So my weld blades I have have the wrong size of thing on them. And I have one, but I don't have the rest. So I gotta go get that one tomorrow. Then I can show you how it works. I gotta put a little piece of metal right here to cover that hole so it doesn't go straight to my air cleaner. It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm done. Are you rolling? I'm rolling. Rolling. Toyota is ready for the Rubicon. Got these little fog lights all installed and hooked up. My new grill. That's yeah, the grill out. has been ordered for a while, but due to Corona, I hadn't received it yet. The other one was broke. It was zip tied in. So this one's good now. It's in. Okay, so the cold air intake replaced this big old menagerie that was right there. It's supposed to run way better. The other air cleaner system was horrible. It had sucked mud right up through the fender and I hated it. So I fixed that problem. And then I put this little jewel on. Right there. So, but this is cool. I'll show you. I've always had welders on my off-road stuff. The Toyota is no exception now. This is from my other rock crawler. The leads are. You plug those bad boys into there, like so. And you bring this over and clamp it onto there. These are my, my welding rods. Let's burn a 7018. We'll see what that looks like in it. So I manufactured this. You'll notice when I start this that it makes a really high pitched whine and if you don't cover yourself up, it will sunburn you horrible bad. So this is one of those little cheap Lincoln, like they had a little stick thing that you would hold to weld with. I took a pair of old riding goggles glued them bad boys in there and you just turn your hat around and you're welding like a banshee <laughs> so we'll fire this truck up i'll show you how this works so the way that you dictate how hot the welder is is by the rpm so i got this little thing we're gonna put it at 2000 rpm flip it to weld about all there is to it. If you notice that high pitch squeal, it's a high frequency weld. It welds really, really good, but it's super bright. So you gotta have a dark lens. What are you building? I'm trying to bend the wheels back on that thing. Side cuts may not be the best thing for bending. Those are pliers, that'll, that'll help you a little better. That's quarter inch and it penetrated. Dang good, you can see the weld on the bottom side, so we're ready for the Rubicon. So I've been waiting for this day for a while. It's the day I take this back. So it's finished, I drove it all over the place and it seems to work good, everything seems to be fine. You know what? I should probably get my light back out of it though. People wanna know what kind of light that is. Let's see. Someone Do sends us. to them, they're awesome. I use them all the time, but truck's done. I'm gonna make the 20 mile drive in it right now back to Kanab. It's gonna be a slow ride. 45 is about as fast as she wants to go. I don't know if she even wants to go that fast. We're gonna do 45. Oh gosh. And we'll get up over the hill. If it doesn't overheat going back, it's gonna be good forever. Stay tuned. All right, we're in the old corn binder and we're headed to Kanab. She's a lot quieter than she used to be, so. It is. We'll head out, see what happens. It ain't the fastest thing. Oh, it's slow. <laughs> She's low gear. Her rear end makes lots and lots of noise. She'll get us to camp. <laughs> Had to squill them one time in the old International. All right, hopefully the tires round out at some point. But yeah. So we got ourselves a 40 minute drive, so, good. So 
I'm just headed out to um, follow Paul on his way to Kanab today. Pretty sure I'm going to have to put my hazards on behind him because he's only going to be able to go about between 40 and 45. <laughs> it's not going to be a very short trip, I'm afraid. We're going to put some gas in so we can make it. Mom just uh, cruised by and didn't even notice us here, so if we break down, we're on our own. Well, it appears that I'm not much help because uh, I haven't found him yet. We're almost there. We're like five minutes away from being there and I haven't seen him yet, so I haven't been much help in the hazard blinking department. So everything's good. We pulled the big hill. It got up to like 190 degrees. Just pulled back down now and we're at 45 just cruising on. So as it turns out, the reason why I didn't find them yet is because I passed them gassing up at the gas station. <laughs> I didn't see them. They should be here in another 30 minutes or so. It's getting warm in here, so I'm going to turn the air conditioning on. There we go. <laughs> So we got her delivered, dropped off, no one was home, so didn't get any footage of him driving under anything, but we're on our way home now. We made it, it didn't get hot, we had no troubles, other than you can't keep it on the road, but uh, good trip. If you had to go very far in that thing, it'd be a long trip, so. <laughs> but we made it. All right, we got some mail today. It's pretty awesome, you guys are awesome, really. We got ourselves some Irwin drill bits. These are supposed to be awesome, cobalts. And they came from John D. McCoff. I don't know how you say that name. McCoffin. Thank you. You guys are awesome. We also got a box of stuff. There were some hair scissors for Michelle and all scribe. Some of these awesome tap bits. They're pretty cool. Pry bar and a thing of O-rings. You can always use O-rings. And that was from Kenny P. Thank you, man. We got this here drill doctor from somebody. There wasn't anything on the box that told us who it was, but Michelle thinks she knows. Well, someone emailed her something about it, I think. So whoever sent this to me, thank you. I'm gonna put it to use. I've got like 200 drill bits to sharpen. Landon's gonna get all over that, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, you are. We got a letter from Mark, and he hooked us up with some donuts, which, who doesn't love some Krispy Kreme donuts? And five dollar gift certificate to Polo Loco. Thank you, man. These are awesome. We will use these up and think of you guys when we're doing it. 